Okay guys, here is a whole of ratio, uh, rates of change and proportion for your GCSE maths. Now there's only one video covering all the examples because they are so, so similar that you don't need separate videos. Um, over on my website you'll find the free vision guide which you can go through with the video, work out which, which bits you do know, work out which bits you don't know. After you've done that, have a go at some of the exam questions, some of the exam papers, some of the grade 9 boost questions. See if what you do know, what you think you don't know, tallies up with which questions you can actually do. Um, once you've finished this, don't forget that there are all of the other topics as well. Good luck guys. To get from seconds to minutes, there are 60 seconds in a minute, so you need to divide that by 60. To get from minutes into hours, there are 60 minutes in an hour, so you need to divide that by 60. To go the other way, to go from hours into minutes, you need to times by 60, and then minutes into seconds times by 60. Grams into kilograms, you need to divide by a thousand. Kilograms into tons, divide by a thousand. Tons into kilograms, times by a thousand. Kilograms into grams, times by a thousand. Now meters per second into um, kilometers per hour is a little bit tricky. We need to do several steps. The first step is times by 60. The second step is times by 60 and then the final step divide by a thousand and then in reverse if you want to go from kilometers per hour to meters per second it is times by a thousand divide by 60 divide by 60. Um, if we want to go from pence into pounds there are a hundred pence in a pound so we need to divide by 100 to go the other way we need times by 100 and it is the same for prices. One gram per centimetre cubed is equal to a thousand kilograms per metres cubed so slightly different here we need to times that by a thousand and then going the other way we need to divide by a thousand. There are a thousand pascals in kilopascal. So to get from pascals to kilopascals, notice how the other one was unusual. We need to divide by a thousand and this one we need to times by a thousand. To go from centimetres into metres, there are a hundred centimetres in a metre. So we need to divide that by a hundred going the other way we need to times by 100. Now as we go to from um, length to areas of volume it gets a bit more complicated because in one meter we have a hundred centimeters, one meter, a hundred centimeters, one meter, a hundred centimeters. So one meter squared is not equal or is not the same um, as thinking about going from centimetres to metres because we have 100 times 100 which is 10,000 centimetres squared so to go from centimetres squared into metres squared we need to divide by 10,000 metres squared into centimetres squared is times by 10,000. We can think about um, cubed in the same way because one meter, cubed is one meter by one meter by one meter, so one meter is 100 centimeters, one meter, 100 centimeters, one meter, 100 centimeters, so one meter cubed is going to have one, two, three, four, five, six zeros after it. One, two, three, four, five, six centimetres cubed after it. So this is a bit more um, complicated. Going from centimetres cubed into metres cubed, we need to divide by 10 um, million. Three, four, five, six, and going the other way, times. Two, three, four, five, six. 
to be able to use um, scale factors, scale diagrams and maps, you're going to need to get your ruler out, so please remember to take it into the exam with you, and you're going to need to I measure really accurately, I'm talking millimetre measuring here. And for every, for example, one centimetre you measure on the map, that could be 3.7 kilometres in real life. So you just take whatever you can measure on the map, on the um, exam paper, and times that by the scale factor given to you in the exam. Ratios can come up in a lot of different ways. One of the ways they can come up is in particularly wordy questions where it doesn't necessarily look like a ratios question, but you have to work out and you have to take the real life context and express the relationship as a ratio. So at a party, there are men and there are women. There are eight men for every six women. If there are 24 women, how many men are there? Now you'll notice when I've written this out, I've left a big gap in the middle here. That is because I'm going to put one in here and this is how I'm gonna work out my ratio. So what do I have to do to six to get down to one? I have to divide that by six, so I have to do the same to the other side. Divide that by six, which is going to give me four over three. Now I need to get from one to 24 to get from one to 24. I need to times that by 24, so I need to do the same over the other side, times by 24, so 4 over 3 times 24 equals 32. And there are lots of different ways you can do this. Um, you can see this one has included um, a fraction. You could also be asked to work out parts, so you just need to work out the total number of parts. In this case, which would just be 8 plus 6. Percentages can come up on the calculator or the non-calculator paper, so it's worth knowing a couple of ways to work them out. On the non-calculator paper, you can work them out um, by using uh, blocks of 10s, 5s and 1s. So 10% of 824 would be 82.4, 5% would be half of that, which would be 41.2, and then 1% of that would be 8.24. And using combinations of 10, 5s and 1s, you can generally make any number that you like. So in your calculator paper, you needed to find 32% of it. All you can do is take 32, divide that by 100, come up with the number you need to type into a calculator, which is 0.32, multiply that by 824, and you can get your answer like that. Interest is just um, another way or another word for working out percentages. So if you leave your money in your bank, the bank will pay you interest on it. Unfortunately, not very much interest at the moment. It's going to be, say, 3% interest on £824. How much would you get after a year? If we have questions or equations using direct or inverse proportionality, for direct proportionality, we can say that x is equal to y, but we need to put a per constant in there, which is generally k. Um, you can take any values that are given to you in the question, plug that in, find the value of k, and then further use the value of k in any other questions. For things that are inversely proportional, we can say that x is equal to k, over y. Again, pop any values in, uh, work out the value of k, and then you can go on and use that value of k to finish off the question. When things are directly proportional, you are going to get a nice straight line graph. When things are inversely proportional, you are going to get a curved graph. When you have a graph, the gradient of the graph is going to show you, show you how quickly how things are changing or the rate of change. The example I've used here is a distance time graph and speed. The rate of change is going to be distance divided by time. So our gradient is always going to be the change in up divided by the change in across. There are two ways you can work out interest, the long, slow and methodical way, or you can remember the equation. Um, so the long, slow and methodical way is to work out each year by year by year. So if you start with £795 at 3.5% compound interest, um, at the end of year one, they're going to have £795 plus the interest which is accrued, which is going to be 27 dollars 
0.25, which is 3.5% of 795, so that's going to equal 822.825 in total. That is the number you then use for the start of next year. Work out 3.5% of 822, which is going to be 28.79, and this is where your numbers start getting quite long. So you need to round them or you need to store them in your memory calculator. But don't round them too short, otherwise you're going to get a rounding error, um, which is going to end up in you having the wrong answer. So either write your entire number down um, from the calculator or store it in your, mem your calculator's memory. So after three years, we're going to have £881.43. Now the equation that you can remember for this is... The final amount is equal to P, open brackets, 1 plus R over 100, close brackets to the power of N, where P is the amount that you start with, R is the interest rate, and N is the number of times you've accrued interest, which generally is going to be um, year by year. So popping that in here, we can see that our start amount was 795, 1 plus 3.5, over 100 to the power of 3 gives us really, really nicely the same answer. One way is quicker, but you have to remember the formula. The other way is slower um, and is more likely to make mistakes because you have to write down the full number. And if you do it the way that the examiners don't want you to do it, um, for example, if they want you to do this formula and you do it by year by year, you might lose your marking, um, your working marks. So this is a tricky one you need to be careful of. If you're doing the foundation tier, you have now finished this unit. You can either go into the other units, um, check what you do and don't know in the revision guide, or you can go and try some exam papers. Hi, tier students, don't worry, we don't have too much left to do. You need to be able to use a tangent to find the gradient at a point on a line because in real life it is very rare that we actually get straight line graphs. So here we have our curve line and we want to find the um, gradient, the rate of change at this point here. So what you need to do is you need to get your ruler and you need to draw a straight line exactly at that point. You will see that this um, line here is not the gradient for any other point on this line. And then from this straight line that you have done, you can then use that to work out the gradient of the line. When you're working out the gradient of the line, bigger triangles, the better. And we need to do changing up by changing across. For iteration, we are looking for the closest approximate solution. So generally, they give you um, an equation that you can't solve by any other method and tell you that the value you're looking for, in this case, x is between 7 and 8. So first, you need to just draw yourself a nice neat table, so you're making everything clear to the examiner exactly what you're doing. Start by popping x is 7 in there. Start by popping x is 8 in there. Show your working, so work out what it actually is. And then make a comment whether it is too big, too small, and then try intermediate numbers. If you're really, really close, only go up a little bit. If you're very, very far away, go up a big bit. If you're not sure, try a number in the middle. Um, there is a little bit of luck involved in this because depending on where you start and which path you go, you may get to the solution quickly or it may take you a little bit of time to get to the solution. The only way you are going to get a good grade in maths is by practicing, 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 practicing. So please do not think that just by watching this video, that is all the revision that you need to do to get a 7, 8 or 9 or any grade that you want. Please, please, please go and do loads and loads and loads of practice.